All right. So um, for this one, I'm just laying out my primary colors that I'm going to be using to mix with. So I've got red, yellow, blue, and then I have black and white. Okay. And I'm going to start off um, mixing my colors. I'm going to get a little bit of red here, and then I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. And I mix them together uh, to make a little bit of like a peachy color. And then I mix a little bit of white in there, um, and that's going to help desaturate it just a little bit. Uh, the goal with this part is I'm going to be making kind of like a, like a reddish brown. Um, and I want to do this because I'm going to layer in all of the dark colors first. And so I'm going to start with like my hair, um, eyebrows, facial hair, things like that. Um, so I'm going to keep mixing these together until I get something that I think looks pretty good for my facial hair. And my facial hair has like a little bit of a reddish tint to it. So I wanted this to kind of lean on the reddish side, but it's still kind of just like a dark brown layer. And I'll add a little bit of blue to that. That same mixture that I had, and that'll make it a little bit darker for my hair, which is closer to like a dark brown or black. So I will just start layering those colors on there, um, getting it nice and dark um, over all of these dark areas, the eyebrows, facial hair, um, hair. And then I'm going to start mixing a little bit of white with that uh, mixture that I made um, and add a little bit of red and blue to it to make kind of like a, like a purplish color. As soon as I have that color nice, how I like it, that's going to be a kind of a shadow underneath my neck. And you'll notice I'll add just a little bit of white to it here and there um, to make sure I get the value that I want. But again, it's still pretty dark. Right underneath the neck, um, some places on the face that have those darker shadows, the cheek. Um, right above the eyes, under the eyes, under the nose, the side of the nose, kind of under the hair. Those areas are going to be some of the areas that you'll want to touch with shadow right away. Um, then I'm adding like a reddish brown to my eyes because I have uh, brown eyes. Um, then I'm going to make like a kind of burgundy colored red for my shirt. Fill that all in as one value for now. And then I want to make kind of a deep purple color, and I'm going to use that for my background. So I'll just cover the whole background in kind of a base color of that. It's a good idea to get your background in there uh, pretty early, so that way it's one of the further back layers of your painting. And then I make kind of like a lighter pinkish color that I go over every of the skin with. Uh, I leave some of the white highlights in there um, and then I do my lips in a sort of this almost the same color as my shirt that kind of burgundy red and then I'll touch some of that underneath your my eyes uh, kind of where you have the eyelid and in the corners of your eyes where the tear ducts are and a little bit around the nose. Then I start to come in with some of the black and this is where things will really start to pop out for you so I really want to hit the eyes, like where the eyelashes are, uh, parts of the eyebrows, things that um, are key features there that'll, that'll bring that out. Other really dark areas are the holes in your nostrils. You want to get those nailed in there. Um, you've got the ears. So like the creases of the ears are pretty dark. You've got spots in the hair that probably need to be darker and the facial hair. Um, so I just bump all of those things up. And then of course you've got the crease in between the lips. And you want to bump that up. And so those really dark areas are what you're looking for at first, okay? Um, again, the shadows on the shirt. I've darkened around the irises. That's the colored part of your eye. You're going to want to make those darker. So it's just a matter of bringing some of those dark values back out. And then I noticed that all of those dark values I put on there were really cool values. So I wanted to warm up my skin so I don't look sickly. Um, so I added yellow as kind of like an undercoat that I'm going to put on top of what I just did in a lot of different places to kind of brighten things up and make it look a little bit more warm. Um, so just yellow, uh, a little bit of red, a little bit of white, things to make it just kind of brighter, not so cold. 
And I'll just keep layering those on there until I kind of like the base value of everything underneath. And you don't want to get your skin too yellow, so after I get my yellow layer on there, um, I will start to add a little bit of like a pink, and that'll help not make it so yellow. If your skin's a little bit too yellow, you could also start to look sick and kind of jaundiced. So I'll make a nice pink, um, and I use that on the highlights of the shirt, and I'll use that on my face as well. Just bumping up different areas to make it look a little bit more like a, a healthy skin tone. And then I'll make like a darker red and start to kind of push these eyes a little bit further. Notice when I'm painting, I'm working all around the painting. I don't sit there and focus on nailing down one area completely. Um, it's called working from general to specific. So I'm moving all around the painting over and over and over, working on different little areas, trying not to get too hung up at one spot at any given time. That helps you keep everything unified, um, helps you make sure that all of your skin tones are matching all across your whole painting. and. Um, it also helps just build things up together as a whole instead of uh, things being fragmented. Finally, I'll add some just plain white on there to bump up some of my highlights on the lighter side of my face even more. And I haven't been super worried about making everything nice and smooth. If that's something that you're interested in doing, you can certainly smooth things out and keep working the skin tone until it's really nice and smooth. But I kind of like to have you know, some of those brush strokes in there and make it look kind of um, loose and artistic. And I noticed that my lips needed a little bit more work on them, so I bumped that dark up on them again and added a little bit of highlight to them. Uh, bumped up some of the darks in the beard and in the eyes again. So then I started to try and shade the nose, and noses can be a little bit tricky because they uh, work a little bit funny with how the shadow works on them. So there's usually a, like a dark shadow underneath the nose with some reflected light at the very bottom, and then um, like the tip of the nose right here is a bit lighter, okay? Um, so I just keep adding some darks onto the shirt, bumping up some of those shadows on there with some black. start adding in some dark areas into the background. I didn't want the background to just stay this light shade of purple because it doesn't add a whole lot of depth. So I added some darker values behind uh, my head on the darker side and um, some blues and a little bit of reds just to kind of make it some of those colors like from the shirt and from my face carry into the background. Um, another color I carried over was some of the yellow on the lighter side. Um, but you don't want it to be too warm, so you'll want to cool that down. I did that by adding some blue and some uh, red to it to make kind of that purplish color that'll cool that yellow down quite a bit. But it'll still have that color underneath it, so it helps kind of unify the whole piece and carry that color through it, okay? So the whole time you're working, you want to think about how your colors are all working together and how you can carry those colors together to create a piece that looks more complete and more unified. So here's where I start adding some of that blue really cooling that down and helping push that background further back. Remember, cool colors go back, warm colors come forward. Then I'm going to get some white and just kind of blend that in on that side. It'll kind of gray it out a little bit, but it'll show that the light is coming from that side, okay? And finally, I'm going to just come back with just some solid white and touch up some of these highlights and bump them up a little bit more. Um, those are usually the finishing touches, is just adding some of those really bright highlights to it in certain spots. And you might, depending on how bright they are in your reference, even make them brighter than what you see in your reference photo, okay? And this is a more clear picture of what it actually looked like. The camera quality wasn't great whenever I was recording it, um, but this picture shows the colors a little bit more true to 